If I actually hit the shoulder, Nick can absorb that. If I hit his jaw at an angle, he can ride it. So if you're a lightweight, considerably a lot lighter than the person that's attacking you, if you swing and hit them, you'll probably find that they'll absorb the strike. But when we actually hit the center of the mass, our power is maximized. I lose power going to the extremities, but I increase the effect of my power bang by hitting the center. So it doesn't matter how small I am, I have much more of a disruptive effect on the human body hitting around. Yes, it's concussive, but the nose, the front of the nose is made of cartilage. So if you hit the nose, it's a soft target. If you push straight to the center, quite disruptive on his center. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to hit it and the person's going to fall on the floor and completely be incapacitated. But what it does mean is there's going to be less damage to your hands or the weapons that you're using and you're going to inflict or maximize your damage to that person. So we're always looking for soft targets and striking with hard weapons. The throat's one, another one would be the solar plexus, a soft area. The abdomen you don't usually worry about. Most people, the average person can take a strike to the gut, but what they can't do is the solar plexus. When you hit the solar plexus and especially with an upright fist bang, it actually incapacitates the person partly because it attacks the diaphragm. So it creates this spasm within the center of the body. But the point is that when you punch, when you strike, if you can strike straight into the mass and whether it be angled or not, you'll get much more of a maximum effects of the strike that you're throwing. Now, sometimes people say to me, but if I turn sideways, how can you access the center of my mass? It doesn't really matter what angle the body is, you always move to the center, always move to the center of the mass. The liver is a good vulnerable area that essentially can be a weakness. The two areas that cause a maximum amount of damage and maximum amount of pain and effect are the liver and the solar plexus. Two areas to target, two soft areas of the body. If he's swinging, as I said, the availability of options to strike would be the side of the head, going in towards the temple, the jaw, basically with the heel of my hand called a hammer fist, so striking to the temple, elbowing and punching. The pubic bone is another soft area, which again, you can strike with the knee or you can punch down in towards the groin. Striking here creates a leverage that actually brings the head forward, but actually disrupts the structure of the body. Everybody talks about the groin, bang. It's a little bit of a fallacy that it's a, a confrontational stopper. Be aware that sometimes when you attack the groin, people have been known to absorb that and carry on in the fight. And this is why I generally prefer going for the neck, the throat. Any sort of strike with a fist or the forearm or the edge of the hand is actually going to cause a little bit of pain disruption. Nice open area. The problem though with accessing the side of the neck is that most people tend to drop their chin and hunch their, their shoulders upwards, which makes the access to it quite difficult. Where you strike really depends on their movement, how they are moving. It's all very well having this idea in a system of strike the nose, strike the throat, strike the solar places, strike the liver. A straight punch and I slip to the outside, I can hit the liver, bang. If he throws a round punch, boom, I can't hit the liver in the same way. I might be able to use a hammer fist, which we'll talk about, but again, Nick's throwing one punch for the sake of demonstration. In real self-defense, the person's going to be looping and swinging multiple punches. In fairness, the reality is that you would be covering up and looking for an opportunity to strike back, and the reaction's very different to if you're going preemptive. Preemptive strikes are easier to, for target selection because you have much more of a choice. You can line up, you can pick the vulnerabilities, you can pick the opportunity. If you allow the person to strike you, there's less of a target focus area for you to go for because there's less of an opportunity because people generally cover up or they bend over or they change their posture when they strike. So these are all considerations but the bottom line is have an idea that you're going for soft targets with hard weapons.